Thank you, Lord, that you know our hearts. Even the pumping of our heart is a prayer. Psalm 139 is amazing revelation of your love, care, and how you watch every step of our lives, every feeling even of our heart you recognize you're a father. Not a father, the father. You're the father of our spirits. We have the fathers of our flesh who trained us, natural fathers, fathers of our human life, but you are the father of the spirits. You're our real father, everlasting father. Even Yeshua is called the everlasting father. We thank you in the name of Yeshua. We thank you in the name of the Messiah. What we cannot say in words, you know, you understand. So we simply pray as we look at these some verses here in the scripture that you would minister to our hearts. Go beyond our abilities. Go beyond our emotions. We are nothing other than what you have given. You have made. When you made us, you made a masterpiece. The enemy tried to divert that and spoil that. But you came as the Redeemer and the Life Giver. So we thank you. In the name of Yeshua, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Yes. In the book of Yeheskel, Ezekiel, there are amazing revelations, but in chapter 16, verse 6, God is talking about when he saw Israel like a little baby, newborn baby in a wilderness, and how God came to Israel. And when I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted in thine own blood polluted in your own blood. You remember in the book of God, in the Torah, we have these words that when a mother gives birth, there has to be a certain time of uncleanness after the birth, a particular time for man, for male, and another timing for female. Not going to details. But that's because our blood is not clean. We have, we are fallen beings. Okay, but in the book of Yoel, the last verse of the book of Yoel, and I'll come back to Ezekiel in a moment, it says, the last verse in the book of Yoel. It's easy to remember what verse because it's the last verse in the book. And I will cleanse their blood. It's about Judah and Jerusalem. I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. This gives me immense comfort because we know there's another blood that cleanses us. And also because of all kinds of pollutions today, our bloodstream can get all kinds of sicknesses. But the Lord says, I will cleanse their blood. Now, I am aware that many versions say, I will cleanse them from the um, blood guiltiness, blood guiltiness. The idea, without a doubt, is right. But the literal word is the blood I will cleanse the blood, dam, dam, dam. Um, yes, I will cleanse the blood. What we cannot cleanse, God can cleanse. Amen. The blood of the Messiah, his perfect sacrifice in Isaiah 53 and all the verses in the New Covenant and every, every part of the scripture, talks about that perfect blood. I saw thee polluted in thine own blood, back in Ezekiel 16, 6. 
oh, my blood is not clean in myself. But thank God for the other blood that cleanses. Today we have a very shallow understanding as sacrifice. We're living in a culture where there's basically no, no sacrifice. The Arabic culture actually has a lot of reminiscence, I mean like reminding of the sacrifice. They do these uh, certain rituals today, the Samaritans do. But uh, in ancient Israel, from morning till evening, the Levites and the Kohanim, particularly the Levites that did the hard work of cutting the animals, slaughtering the animals, they knew how important is blood. They knew. And this news that came that a perfect sacrifice is coming, Isaiah 53, they, that was amazing expectation because they knew how important is the blood. The life of the blood, actually the soul, soul life of the blood, the soul of the blood, uh, the soul of uh, nefesh, ha, um, nefesh ha, um, the soul, uh, soul life is in the blood. I said to thee when thou wast in thy blood, you were in your own blood. Ah, uh, I said one word, live. Live. This is a commandment. I gave a commandment, live. I sent, said unto thee when thou wast or when you were in your own blood. Hmm. I just gave a commandment, live. We have, as humans, in any race in the world, two problems. We have the pollution, the guilt, uh, we're not clean. And then death. Romans deals mostly with the justification part. It also has the other sides. And Ephesians starts with us being dead and we're made alive. If we could only see that sin brings death, and God is a God of life, enjoyment, joy. I'm going to get into that a little bit more. But now, the book of Yohanan, wow. John, chapter 12, the last verse. I like the last verses sometimes. They're very clear. John 12, 50, when he was talking about Amazing things in this chapter. He said, I know that his commandment is life everlasting. So the Father's commandment is life everlasting to Israel, to anyone who will listen, because through Israel and Israel's Messiah, this, this is going to everyone, whoever wants. God so loved the world. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. When God commanded this baby that was about to die in his own blood, Israel, live. The baby lived. And then he washed and clothed and did all these amazing things. God's commandment is life everlasting. Wow. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said to me, I speak. Do we see all the words of God, the commandments of God, as words of life? Now, some people will say, wait a minute, I cannot get eternal life by keeping the commandments. It's true. We have to understand when God says in the books of Moses, Deuteronomy, and it's in, in several places, keep this word, this law, for this is your life. Mm. It is not in the power of the law to give eternal life. 
It's speaking about human life, protecting human life. It's all about life. All the words of God are protecting human life. And he speaks them as a father. I'm a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. So when God even said, I'm not now so much in a spiritual side yet, I'm still in a scene where they were given. When God said, uh, thou shalt have Shabbat, you will have Shabbat day holy. He's a father. He said, I had a Shabbat. I did all this. I made these worlds and everything. And I had Shabbat. I'm a father. So follow the father. Yeah. He's showing my life. This is how my life lives. I don't take anything from anybody. Actually, he can't. He owns everything. But when he gives us our area, he's, he doesn't take it away. He gives us choices to do. and He doesn't touch that. That's yours. You decide. Even where you spend eternity, you have a say on it. If you want my beautiful world or not. But this is how, the, how life works. His commandment is eternal life. He says to live. Now, I'm not saying that we get eternal life by doing things. This is not what the Bible says. But we have to understand that when God's first commandment is, I am the Lord your God, he says, in essence, I am, I give myself as a gift to you to take care of you in everything so you never need to steal. He does, say, he does say, thou shalt not steal. But it's like a prophecy. You will not steal if you accept this, I am the Lord your God. Then you will not steal because I give you your lunch. And if it's late, it's, it'll come. It's in my hands. You don't take someone else's life partner because I'm your giver. Uh, you will not kill because your neighbor is my gift to you. And if it's a bad neighbor, you'll call upon me and I'll sort it out. Everything is a gift. This is how the commandments were to be understood as commandments of life. It went upside down because we are so perverted that we don't understand God is a father and everything is a gift. That's why the law cannot. If there was a com commandment given to us that could have given life, surely righteousness would have been by the commandment. But commandments cannot give life. Paul is talk, talking about eternal life. Moses was talking about preserving this human life as the gift of God so that we find him as everything. We have to understand that. So everything God has given is good. The law is good and spiritual, but I am under, sold under sin. God is so good. He could not give anything that is not perfect. But because we turn everything upside down, that's why law cannot help us. It cannot help us. There's no way. And it cannot redeem us. That's why the Messiah said to us, whatever you would that others will do to you, now you turn that demand towards your own heart, do you do that to them? This is the meaning of the law and the prophets. In other words, everybody knows the law. Every sinner, which is every person born on this earth, knows the meaning of the Torah, the law. But we know it upside down, the wrong way. You should be kind to me. You are not good to me. You should have done that to me. Listen to politics or... I don't want to put down politicians like worse than any other people, but 
in any conversation, they should have done that to, that to me. You should have done that to me. You should have done. They should have done. And then, well, I have a little weakness there, I admit. But we are way easier with ourselves than with others. Am I the only one? Okay, that's why we need the cleansing that the only the perfect love can do. But let me go forward. Mm. By the way, if we really yeah. honest with ourselves, life becomes more easy. And when I'm really upset with someone, that's a moment usually I forget how much God forgave me. Yes. Psalm 119, verse 29. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me, give me your Torah, your law, graciously. Let me see grace in your law. Otherwise, I have a way of lying in me. If I don't see, <clears throat> in other words, that when God said, I am the Lord your God. You remember the Ten Commandments, the voice coming from the mountain, I am the Lord your God. It's, it's not exactly like that. It's a father's voice. I don't know how it sounded. I love the movie Ten Commandments. But, I think it was a little interesting how it came. Yeah, it is a holy voice. Yes, it was a it was a really a terrifying moment. Hebrews 12 says it, but it was the father, the father's voice. I am the Lord your God. It's even beyond what I give. I am until we know who he is. I don't know what I am. As, an, as a teenager and a young person, teenager plus, I didn't know what I am, who I am. I traveled many lands and went many schools. I didn't know who I am. I came here and I know who I am. Because here I heard that voice. I am the Lord, your God, and you're giving me your law, even your commandments, graciously, meaning I'm showing you how my nature and life is and works. But because I'm not receiving that, and it's written upside down in my sinful heart, I'm demanding and I'm... I, devil has given me an image of God which is not true image. It, not individually, but it's in our bloodstream. We think always of our wonderful Father and God something else than He truly is. So we don't see this. Remove from me Take away from me the way of lying and grant me your law, your commandments, everything. Graciously, graciously. Jonah 2 verse 9 talks about lying vanities. They're the idols. But the biggest idol, yeah, it's our self, but the biggest idol in the world, maybe, is a wrong view of God, wrong image wow. of God, that is not the Father, wow. that is not the good Father. Now, in heaven, in the heavenly kingdom ultimately where we will be, let's say in New Jerusalem, as, the, as New Jerusalem and in New Jerusalem, we are beyond temptation. Nobody will ever sin there. It is guaranteed. One of the reasons might be 
because we always know him, know him as he is. Let me see your word in this light that there's no way of lying. Oh, but let me go further in this matter. In Israel, there was a wonderful man when we came back from, if you remember when we came back from Babylon in the time of Ezra, and uh, it's a long time ago, I know. It's a long time ago. But Ezra was a man who saw things in the right way. But at the same time while I'm talking about this, we know there's a more perfect way of seeing things than what was under these shadows that were good shadows. When we finally saw the day spring from on high, when the light sprang from on high, when Messiah was born, the day spring from on high has visited us. You remember in the book of Luke, Luca, in the book of Luke, the ray, the light of ray from heaven has visited us from some 33 years plus, something like that was the time. time. And then we saw a brighter light, same source, but we saw it more brightly. And then we saw what he really means. By the way, when our Lord spoke, even a Sermon on the Mount, he always appealed to the Father, to the Father, to the Father, to the Father's heart. And when he gave the even the most strictest sounding commandments that sound very tough to our ears, difficult to our ears, he always said, your Father in heaven knows. Don't worry, your Father in heaven knows. And then we, when he gave other commandments, don't lust and don't desire this and that, it's in view of the Father who provides. So don't go for your own provisions. It's always in the view of that. Two books particularly, the book of Matthew, and the book of Yohanan, John, John, Yohanan, Matityahu, Matthew, the Father, the Father. I went once through every reference where it talks about the Father. It's really a revolu revolution and revelation to us. So the Father heart of God is the thing. There was a man called Floyd McClung, whom I personally knew. I was with him when I was a hippie in Amsterdam, and we were the believing hippies. We were believers, and we were drawing other hippies um, from the park to come to the knowledge of truth if we succeeded. And God gave us some success by his grace, by his grace. But Floyd had a driving, burning desire in his heart uh, to show the Father heart of God. But he told a story. Floyd had a daughter Floyd had a daughter uh, who ended up lying often, always speaking lies. And uh, Floyd tells it in his own book, so I'm not speaking evil of anyone here. This is what happened. And uh, Floyd tried discipline and all kinds of disciplines and a serious talk. And the girl was already a teenager and, you know, you just, you know, this is not pleasing to the Lord. This is not pleasing to the Lord. Please. No, nothing helped. No, this way of discipline and that way of discipline. So Floyd finally called his daughter to his room and said, let's have a talk. And Floyd broke down. He started to cry, to weep. He wept like a child. And he said, my dear daughter, I don't know what to do with you because I love you so much. It hurts me so deeply. 
that I cannot help you to quit lying to me or to whoever, whatever. I cannot help you and it hurts me as a father. Mm -hmm. And he wept and embraced the daughter. Something broke. Something happened that could not happen by teaching, spanking, nothing helped. Floyd went to be with the Lord over a year ago, a year or two ago, I lost the count. Okay, what happened? Now the daughter saw the father's heart. For the first time, the daughter understood, ah, it's the father's heart here, and I'm hurting my father's heart. And it broke her. And the lying, the chain lying, stopped. Now, I'm not saying that she became sinless, but the habit of lying stopped. Why? Because she mm -hmm. saw the Father's heart. Wow. This is what the Bible is about. Any part of the Bible, wilderness walking, Father was so sad that the people would not listen even to the point that he could really reveal his heart to them. But he was so pleased with those few that were listening. He's just waiting all along to reveal his heart. That's what it is. There was a little tear that tickled my eyeglasses. So, so now I'm okay. That's literally true. So there was a man who really understood. His name was Ezra. He understood what we lost in Babylonian captivity. He understood that this land is a love gift from God to Abraham, Abraham, our father. He understood the land is a love gift. And when we were put out to Babylon because of our bad behavior, oh, we were outside of that area of the gift of God. We still could somehow listen to his word, but in Babylon we could not sing these songs of Zion. We could not. So Ezra dedicated himself to this word. In a new covenant, there's one man. His name is Shaul, Paul. He was similar to Ezra because he dedicated himself to the Word of God. The same Paul, Shaul or Paul, Paulus, whatever, he dedicated himself to the counsel of God the same way as Ezra did. Uh, Paul, a servant of Yeshua, called apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Okay, you know the word Pharisee, parush? The Aramaic, it means separated. The party of the Pharisees were separated to God and to the law of God. Now we knew it grew, grew out of bounds. It grew out of what it was supposed to be. Uh, beyond what it was supposed to be. But Paul uses the same word. I'm a Pharisee unto the gospel of God. Now, in a meaning of I'm separated, just like I used to be one of the leaders of the party of the Perushim, way beyond many of my equal, equals, like he says in Galatians. But here he says, I'm separated unto the message of God unto this, how he revealed himself. Mm -hmm. This time, wow. it wasn't Mount Sinai. This mount, it was the other mountain, Mount Zion, Mount Zion, right there where the Messiah not only brought the message to us, but brought the full payment and the life-giving spirit to see the Father in his face, to see the Father in the scriptures, mm -hmm. to see the Father. Remember, Philip said, show us the Father. 
I got a request. So asked the father. Yeshua said, Have I been so long with you? He that has seen me has seen the father. I'm no different than the father. Yeah, one day we'll see the father in more perfection, absolutely. But he that has seen me has seen the father. So I want to take a few verses from Ezra who really talked about life in this word, life. Life and love, they're like two sides of the coin when we really tap into the eternal life in Yeshua. That's our ability to love. And when we tap into his love, we have life. Mm -hmm. But he also says, when you see me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. The Father and I are ehad, ehad. one in the ehad, oneness, compound oneness. I'm going to read a few verses quickly and don't want to drag it very long. Psalm 119, Ezra, the man who had the same dedication as Paul had uh, for the revelation of the Messiah, who died, rose again, and his beautiful, Paul's beautiful prayers for Israel. Oh, I want to learn. I really want to learn from his heart for Israel as well. Yeah. Psalm 119, verse 25, he says, My soul cleaves to the dust. Quicken thou me. Make me alive. As your word, according to your word, I don't know why the English language loves the word according to. It's right, it's good, according to. But in Hebrew it's as your word, as thy word. So make me as live as your word. Oh, oh, this, every Bible is a living Bible. You remember they had these Bibles called the Living Bible. It's probably pretty good in many things. Uh, it's good for reading, not for exact study. But make me as live as your word. Ooh, this word is live when the word became flesh. Make me alive. How, did, how does that happen? We died and rose with him. Quicken me as your word and according to your word. So thou shalt show me, show me the way of life. And in your presence is fullness of Joy at thy right hand. Pleasures forevermore. There's pleasures. Pleasures. Well, wasn't Paul and his covert workers beaten? Didn't they have a lot of pain in their body? Yes, they did. But they were singing in the midst of the jail experience because they lived in another level. So while they were suffering, they were alive. They knew the love that makes alive, and they knew the life that makes us free to love. Mm -hmm. Ah, but all that because there's the cleansing of the blood that cleanses us from our pollution, from every guilt. We could never enjoy God's goodness, if we had any guilt. And we are not to put any medicine upon our guilt in our imperfections and our failures, any other medicines than the perfect blood. No, I, I'm not supposed to say tonight, oh, I prayed enough today, I feel great. Actually, if we pray, we feel great. But that's not the point of our, that's not where our assurance of peace is. It's a perfect blood that was shed. Let's move on. Verse 37, Psalm 119. This great psalmist Ezra said, Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and make me alive in thy way. Make me alive, quicken. That's actually perfectly done in the resurrection of Yeshua that we reckon we were risen with him. 
But in our daily walk, we are merging into that resurrection. It is a lot to think here. But already Ezra experienced something about that in a way that it was possible that time. Not in a fullness that we are experiencing today, experiencing, but let me say this. These people that wrote the Bible in the first part were way more dedicated. They saw the value of it way more than most of us today. I'm not blaming anybody here. There are dedicated people in our generation too, but generally speaking, they were way more dedicated to the Spirit of God than we are now, even though the Holy Spirit is way deeper working in our hearts yes. right now. Yeah. These things are mysteries. I just read this again. Turn away from mine eyes from beholding vanity and make me alive. Quicken me in your way. Actually, without revelation from God's heart, without seeing the greatness of the God who said, I'm a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. I'm a father to Israel. And by the way, father to all the children of God at our present age. Uh, without a revelation of that in our hearts, we don't really know what the vanity is. We can learn van definitions of vanity which can be useful, but unless we really see in our heart that he's a father and how good he is, we can't understand the eternal value system or the eternal way how value is in eternity's viewpoint. We can say eternal value system or eternal value revelation. Right. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Uh, the day is still, the sun is still up. Behold, verse 40, same chapter, verse 40. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. I long after your precepts. Quicken me, make me alive in your righteousness. So these God's precepts, there's commandments, there's ordinances, precepts, other details. This is a big teaching in itself. But he saw everything connected to life. So he says, I'm longing to understand these details even in your word. So quicken me in your righteousness, in thy righteousness, not in my own. What you say here, and we say what you have accomplished for us in the perfect sacrifice when it is finished. Quicken me in your righteousness, Messiah, for us. The perfect righteousness of God. Verse 88. I think we read verse 40. Yeah, verse 88. And what psalm are we... Psalm 119, and now verse 88. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes. Sound is like healthy. Sound is healthy. Let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I be not ashamed. Actually... I meant verse 88, but 80 is also very good because it talks about soundness in God's word. The apostle in letters to Timothy borrowed the same word. He talked about sound teaching, sound doctrine, sound teaching. That means healthy. You know what? If it's healthy, it's alive. If it's healthy, it grows. So people often emphasize right doctrine, correct teaching, Right teaching, correct teaching, right doctrine, correct doctrine. It's good, wow. but it's too low. It's good, but it's too low. When we see that everything is alive, we've been called into the land of the living. Show me the path of life. 
Like Psalm, it says, path of life. Yes. Like in the book of Acts, path of life. Yes. This Bible is living Bible. Even when I hold it in my hands, you see it's living. Yes. It is living. So, verse 88. Quicken me, make me alive after thy loving kindness. Or as is your loving kindness, that word is hesed. Grace, covenanted grace, make me alive in your grace. The wonderful Father is full of grace. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. That's the idea when Yeshua says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And it may be possible to translate it If you love me, you will keep my commandments. It's really so that, you know, I I take a very easy illustration, but I could be a little tired, but if my wife says, uh, not that she gives me commandments, but she has a request. She says, you know what? We are out of bread and tea. Could you go to the store? I, I think I, I was planning to just coast and put my feet up. But if she says that, I know that voice. She needs these things. I'm going to do it. This is how the love of God works. When we know that voice behind that commandment, We know that voice, that it is good. We know it's the Father's voice. Mm. It's easier to obey than not to obey. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have the choice. But actually, if we are very close to him, it is almost like we don't have the choice. Yeshua said to the twelve, Hey, these people walked away because... I said one thing that was very hard to understand, that means. Do you also want to go away? You're free. Nobody's paying you to do this. You're free. Will you also go away? Peter said, to whom? I have no options. I'm coming to this point like, not perfectly, but imperfect way, that we really don't have many options. The voice that is calling us is too good. Just like Floyd's daughter, Floyd McClung's daughter, when she saw the father's heart, she could not anymore say, I do what I want to do. She could not. It's like, I cannot. I saw my father's heart. I saw how how I've hurt my father. I cannot do it. Paul, Shaul, Paul said, I could not but obey the heavenly calling, the heavenly vision. I had to obey. So in a way we are free. Yeah, sure we're free. But I... I've come to the conclusion that we cannot walk away. And I've come to the conclusion, this is the big conclusion, Israel, our beloved nation, is coming to a point very soon that Israel is going to recognize what Psalm 80 is saying the shepherd of Israel. Who is the shepherd of Israel? Shine forth. Israel is going to recognize the voice. Israel is going to recognize that voice. Apostle said on the road to Damascus, he was a rabbi actually, the rabbi Shaul on the road to Damascus said, who are, the great light fell on him and said, Shaul, Shaul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord, Marie? 
Who are you, Lord? He didn't know the voice, but now when the scales fell off his eyes, he knew the voice. Israel is coming to this point like Shaul did. Okay, verse 149, thank you. And the wonderful Rabbi Ezra, he wasn't called Rabbi, but practically he was the teacher. Hear my voice according, verse 149, same psalm. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness, or as your loving kindness. Hear my voice, O Lord. And quicken me, make me alive according to thy judgments. So that's also true. If you're asking something from me that I cannot do, you give me life according to your grace. Hear my voice according to your grace. Your loving kindness is hesed, grace. I need grace. Hear my voice according to your grace. I'm below what you're asking, maybe. Make me alive according to your judgment. So whatever you're asking, let your grace make me alive so I can do it. Uh, yeah, we were in one prayer meeting the, on a Monday, and the prayer leader gave a wonderful example how this verse works. Uh, the prayer leader said that they were with other believers and he talked a little bit roughly uh, to some individual in this uh, settlement where they lived. You should do this, you should do this, and uh, like, like, like uh, not really lovingly when they didn't do what they really should have done uh, more, better and quicker. And then the Lord laid it on his heart. No, no, you need to. You, it wasn't my heart. You need to call and ask for forgiveness. Say sorry. Okay. So he did it. And he said, he said uh, in his own words, that it didn't come out right. I, I, I need to ask forgiveness. And the other person was so blessed that he couldn't even remember when someone asked, said, I'm sorry to him for anything. He couldn't even remember. And he was so blessed that he started to tell about his own problems. And, and it ended up being a blessing. But that's what it is when we walk in this matter of being made alive, that we receive another kind of a heart which we have on the inside, but it's made alive so that commandments are not difficult because we walk in love. Next verse, where the great teacher of Israel addresses the same word alive, 154. Verse 154. Plead my cause and deliver me. Make me alive. Quicken me according to thy word. It's always appealing to this, that this word has so much life for our human life, but behind that is the God of life. Us that are in the Messiah, we're tapping into the eternal life that's already in the Messiah, in us, where people have life, New life, new creation, new world, new heart. So, plead my cause. This is the challenge to prayer. Challenge to prayer. Oh, I need to learn this again. I need to learn this again. Verse 156. Great are your tender mercies, O Lord. So when... Ezra is thinking about the tender mercies. Yeah, he knows the word. He's got, he has in his memory why we were put out of Israel for 70 years. And then he remembers the tender mercies 
that caused Daniel the prophet to pray there for the return of Israel, return of Judah, I should say, the house of Judah, and whoever. And then when the Jewish nation, the house of Judah, returned, that was the act of God's tender mercies as a group, individually, and we were even mixed with many Babylonian things, and we sang Babylonian songs, and we had mixture in our family lives from Babylon that need to be uh, dealt with, but it was tender mercies, tender grace. Wow. The tender mercies are the mercies of the Father. And quicken me according to thy judgments. Make me alive. Again, make me alive. And then verse 159, he says, Consider how I love thy precepts. Well, he loved everything about God's word. He loved the histories. He loved the stories. He read all of the books that were known that time in the Bible. But he said, thy precepts, because he saw that that was the central line where life was connected to these statements that were called commandments. Now, we, were, we are also in the statements of life. Now, in the New Covenant time, the problem, I should say the need or the problem, is that God's people don't know the life that we have. And it's the life that fulfills the commandments. I have many more verses, but I'm going to skip over, go to the main point and stop here and say one more time, I could not finish anything I wanted to share. This is so big. Romans 8. Ooh, there's therefore now no condemnation to those which are in Yeshua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's the life-giving spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, that is a law. Ezra knew that God's laws are connected to life, keeping this physical life blessed and then finding the life giver behind them. But now that life giver is in us. Wow. Ah, the life giver is the love giver. Ah, the law of the spirit of life in Yeshua the Messiah has made me free from the law of sin and death. So now there's two things. There's the thankfulness that flows out of the heart. We are so thankful that you, he forgave us. We're so thankful, Lord, that you forgave us. We're so thankful that you've been so good. You're so loving. You're so forgiven. But here's the thing. Thankfulness could be a cause. And I, we, I could say, I dedicated my life to you because you did this to me, so I'm going to dedicate my life to you. And this could be very sincere, but it would not be enough. How do I say that? I tried it, and I burned out. It's not even our will desire. It's not even in our willpower and our desire. But it is with that thankfulness we get the power. It's here. For what the Torah could not do, the Torah talks about life and it's perfect. The last verse in Psalm 176, Psalm 119, verse 176 is, Seek your servant, I'm like a lost sheep. The great lover of God, God's law, in his sincerity said, Seek your servant. I still feel like I'm lost. That's very honest holiness. It's honesty of a holy man. But now we have something amazing. What the law could not do, it was weak through the flesh, my flesh, that cannot do what I should do. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, that means to atone for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, actually atoned for sins, wow. but to replace the sinner on a, on a tree. And for sin, that means he dealt with the sin nature. Condemned sin in the flesh, 
that the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of the perfect Torah, perfect teachings, perfect law, might be fulfilled in us who do not walk after the flesh, but after according to the Spirit. Ah, this is a new world. I, I'm not doing it justice, but we have to stop somewhere. But this is the thing. We have love, we have life. We have grace, we have life. We have life because the life giver is in us. We are recent people. We're forgiven people. We're recent people. It's not, it's, well, we can make it into theology, but it's more than that. It is revelation of him who cannot be even described with words. So just like that daughter, Floyd's daughter, who then was young and now is up in age, I'm sure, she was set free from illusions by seeing the Father's heart. Now we see both things, the Father's heart and what the Father did in the Son. How do we see it? By the help of the Holy Spirit. I have to stop here. But we, you know, the treasure we have, the treasure we have, the life we have that we can share together in our weakness. We can bring our weaknesses together. We can pray for one another. Ah, Lord, you are so good. You are so good. In the name of our wonderful Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. Amen.